Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So if you're new here, my name is Andrea and I'm a music photographer based in London and I do videos mostly about that. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell, I don't know if you are a recurring viewer or not, but I just got a haircut. Got some little curtain bangs going on, some little wispy flyaways, some layers, took out some length, feel nice and fresh. But anyway, um, so this video is gonna be some of my top tips for designing album covers. Again, if you're new here, I have a whole video on my channel about all the album covers that I've designed. I'm gonna leave it linked down below. And on that video, I kind of showcase the different artwork that I've done. But for this video, I thought it would be interesting to kind of go through some tips, some advice, some, some information, basically some insights into album cover design and what goes into it, the things that you should think about and basic tips in general. Before I go into the video, please remember to like, subscribe, dislike if you disliked it. Doing those things just really helps the channel grow and reach other people. So that would be great. So let's get into it. In this video, I'm just going to cover the process behind the method of bringing the artwork, the concept into life. I also just want to say that most of my experience designing album covers has been mainly through photographs that I've taken. I actually have a degree in graphic design, but I don't use it as much. I guess I use that part of my degree more so when I'm actually designing like the template of the artwork. But subjectively, my album cover art has mostly always been photography based. But I think a lot of the things that I'm gonna say can apply to design work that's more illustration-like or just design-like in general, as opposed to being strictly photographical. Does that make sense? Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is the mood board. A lot of the times when you're working with a client, before you even get into the project, you kind of approach the idea via a mood board. And a lot of the times the client provides you with the mood board of what they're looking for. Sometimes you can also give them your own mood board of things that you think might work and you can kind of come up with like a final collaborative mood board. But this can vary a lot from client to client. Some clients have very strict brand guidelines and they have very specific imagery and color palettes and fonts that they want you to use. And then other times other artists are very open to your input as the album cover designer as well. It all depends a lot. Sometimes you can play with their guidelines a little bit if they're not too strict about it. You know, let's say they give you a font, but you can maybe change the color of the font, mess around with the placement and stuff like that. And let's say they give you a color palette of, I don't know, five, eight colors that they usually use. Sometimes they'll be okay with you just, you know, picking maybe like three of those or two of those and just using those and kind of prioritizing and focusing on those two colors instead of the whole color palette. And then some other clients might want you to use pretty much all of their color palette and not really prioritize any sort of color. It all depends, but these are things that you kind of have to go through and things you have to consider when you approach a client or a client approaches you. This is usually something that happens at the beginning. And I'm thinking about doing a video all about mood boards. Let me know if you'd be interested in the comments down below because mood boards are honestly such an important part of the creative process and they can come in such different ways. You know, for some people, mood boards are photographs of other artists, paintings, text, architecture, like you can you can pull influences from so many different things, so many different sources and it's a very interesting way of coming up with an idea, of brainstorming ideas because when you're trying to create a visual piece, you know, a visual art piece, a visual cover, a visual product, a lot of the times I think it's very beneficial to brainstorm in a very visual way as well. It's not just conceptual, it's not just literal it can be quite a visual brainstorm and i think you know that's what moon boys are for a lot of the times so let me know if you'd be interested in a video about that the next thing that i think is very important to note and to consider when you're designing a cover is sizing because this is always something you need to pay a lot of attention to when you are transferring a design from like you know a digital platform into a physical output because there can be a lot of things lost in translation and you have to sort of make sure that the printed output matches the idea that you had in the screen. So sizing is very important. From my personal experience, I feel like fonts usually look bigger printed out and images 
usually look smaller when printed out. What I mean by that is, let's say you're designing an album cover, you know, you're in your little computer, in your Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, whatever you use. Um, let me know what you guys use to design album covers, I'll be interested to know. But let's say you're there, you're designing, and you have your main image, and then on the back you have a lot of copy or like text. I feel like you, you see the text smaller than it actually is. It must have something to do with the fact, for example, when you're holding an art piece, an album cover, you know, a book, whatever, something that you're gonna read from. In real life, you usually have it closer to your face to read, then you have your computer screen close to your face. The distance between looking at an album cover in front of you in real life and looking at that same design on the screen can be very different because there's more distance between you and the screen than the distance between you and the cover when you've seen it in real life. So the sizing can sometimes get a bit lost in that translation because you interact with the art piece differently. You interact with it from a different distance. Does that make sense? I feel like maybe it doesn't but let me know if you understand what i mean and for some reason i feel like with images it's almost the opposite i feel like sometimes the images aren't big enough i feel like that they usually benefit from being as large as you can make them on a design because when they print i feel like sometimes they can lose the focus that they have on the art piece yeah um i think about these things a little bit subjectively so hopefully this makes sense to you guys logically along the lines of sizing i think another really good tip when it comes to coming up with an album cover working on an album cover especially when you're getting to the final end stages of the design is to have a little prototype when you make prototypes you want to make sure that you have them in the actual real life size of the thing that you're designing so let's say for this release that i'm working on it's going to be a 10 inch so i always keep a 10 inch vinyl next to my computer when i'm designing so that i can constantly gauge the sizing of things i'm going to insert a clip of what i mean let's say that, that was the album cover that i was designing a girl can dream right here i have my real life size vinyl this is not exactly the same size because i don't have it open in photoshop but let's say it was exactly the same size i would be able to kind of gauge the sizing of things a little bit better it just helps you know until you can create an actual prototype for the initial and the mid steps of the process i think it can be somewhat helpful i hope that makes sense I don't know if this is very accurate, but it has worked for me. Every now and then I'll size the design on my screen to be exactly the size of this so that I can gauge how big or how small things are looking. And then once I'm really close to the final image for the album cover, I'll try and print out a prototype. I don't have like big enough paper right now to print it. So I just use a little A4 paper. That's why it's so small. When you are designing a sleeve that has, you know, a front cover, a spine and a back cover, the template will look something like this. I'll include like a proper template here so you can kind of see what it is like. And you will see that when you open the template, the back side is to the left of the front cover, which is unusual because I feel like mentally when you're designing, I think you would put the front cover on the opposite side to what it has to be. But when you print it, because you're folding it, it has to be printed in that order for it to fold properly. So these are the sort of things that you need to keep in mind. And sometimes when you go to print it, you'll catch those mistakes. So it's good for you to have a little prototype so that you make sure that you have designed things in the right order. So it's always a good trick. My next tip would be to make sure that the design that you're working on translates well to different sizes. Because especially nowadays, obviously they still get made into vinyl, CDs, maybe tape, but it will probably mostly live in a little thumbnail on a Spotify or in someone's phone nowadays. So I think it's very important to consider that when you are designing a cover, you wanna make sure that it translates well to being a tiny little thumbnail. So what you can do, an easy way to do this really, is get your artwork that you're designing and just shrink it to what it would look like as a thumbnail and see if like the main elements of the design still show up. Make sure that you can still read 
whatever you need to read in that size make sure that you can basically still understand what the cover is if there's like a concept going on you want to make sure that that it's not lost in that reduction in size and along the same lines to that i think it's important to have a conversation with the client to know what their plans are for the artwork so let's say from the get-go they are planning on releasing their album in 12 inch vinyl they also are thinking of doing like some tape releases and then they also have like a digital format it might be interesting before you really get into the design think about an idea that would translate well visually to all those different formats so you would have like a square format for the vinyl let's say and then a bit more of a rectangular one for the tape since you have the heads up that that design is also going to be used in a rectangular form it might be helpful or interesting to think of a design that would translate well for example i recently did the design for this band i'm not too sure how to pronounce it is it reek rick I'm not too sure. They are a band from Sweden. I've recently made the design for it. I'm gonna include it here just so that I can explain it a little bit better. And basically from the get-go, I, I remember I asked them, where are you gonna put this design on? Are you thinking about just releasing a vinyl? Are you thinking about having any other format? They said that they were. They said that they wanted to have it in vinyl and also tape. So from the very start of the process of designing the artwork for them, I wanted to kind of see if I can get an image that will look just as good on a rectangular shape as it would on a square. So for this one, I used a flower and I think it works really well diagonally on that square and then horizontally on the rectangle. So I think it, it was helpful and good to know that they wanted to have that design in that different format so that I could kind of think ahead and try and come up with something that would work really well in both of those different formats. So my next tip would be to maybe not design things too close to the border of the album cover. If you can avoid it, if it's something that you really want to do, let's say you really want to have like some sort of frame around your design or anything like that, that's totally fine. But if it's something that you feel like you can kind of get away without doing, that you can avoid, maybe avoid it because that way there'll be basically less of a chance of your design being a little bit misplaced when it goes to the manufacturer. So let's say that you did have a frame around your album cover. So like you have like a square frame around that design and you send it to print and it gets a little bit skewed and that frame is not centered on the square. Is this becoming a little bit too complicated to visualize? I hope not. But basically by avoiding putting things on the border or, or avoiding really, really strong and unyielding symmetry, you can kind of avoid translation mishaps between you and the manufacturer because it will be harder to notice if something's just a little bit skewed to the one side. But again, this is not really a main focus that you should design your, your cover around. Just something to consider if you are thinking about going into a very symmetric art piece. Just make sure that your communication with the manufacturer is really really good and that they really understand the importance of all of that and that nothing will get distorted or anything like that because if it does it's going to be super noticeable speaking about that whole communication with the manufacturer make sure that your final piece the final artwork that you sent them is on the cmyk format i don't know if that's how you pronounce it i'm gonna try and explain it very simply basically when you're working on a design on the computer you can basically save that file in rg B, which is just like the normal colors or CMYK which is basically the printers colors because the printers usually print using four different colors so C is cyan for blue M is for magenta the pink Y is for yellow and K is for black so they basically have four colors and then the printer uses different I don't exactly know how it works but it just uses different quantities of those different colors to produce a color. So basically you have to save your, uh, <laughs> your image file in a language or in a mode that the printer will digest and understand better and get the most accurate colors. And one thing that you will notice once you translate from RGB to CMYK is that sometimes it will change the colors a little bit. So make sure to adjust those colors accordingly if you feel like once you made the conversion that it, it still holds up to what you want it to look like but yeah that's definitely something to consider i think i touched on this a little bit before but when you are designing an album cover especially if you're also in charge of the back cover and the spine i think it's very important to work with a template so you can either ask the artist management their record label to send you 
a template or if you are in direct touch with the manufacturer you can ask them for a template and basically you just have to make sure that your design fits well within those margins and that the images get placed correctly on the template so that when that file is printed and you fold it it all looks right you know that everything is folded in the right order in the right way very important to work with templates again when you are designing the full scope of the cover the front the spine and the back and make sure that everything works seamlessly and uniform because if you just send them separate files sometimes it might not print very well and stuff like that so working with a template is very helpful to you as an artist and to the and to the manufacturer as well. Basically, what it means is that you as the artist are in charge of the placement of how you want everything. It's basically how you tell them, this is exactly how I want this printed. So it's not really open to interpretation. So they will print it exactly as you want it hopefully sometimes you know there's some mishaps some miscommunications but usually that's what a template is for is to facilitate that communication between you and the manufacturer and make sure that things look exactly like you want them to speaking of templates and stuff <laughs> i think something that i never really gave too much thought to before i actually started designing covers is the spine because you usually just focus a lot on the front the back and you forget this little thing here and this actually holds a lot of important information it should have the artist's name the ep's name maybe the catalog number and stuff the catalog number is something that the artist management the record label should give you the barcode is also something that you shouldn't really have to worry about as the artist maybe you can kind of save a space for the placement of it on your design and maybe let them know like oh this is where i would put the barcode as a suggestion for example with me when i design album covers i kind of put a placeholder barcode on the back so that they know like where it would fit in nicely so the spine is very important and you can get creative with it just make sure that you don't forget about it because it's a very important part of the design especially commercially when it goes to you know record stores and stuff this is how people find things how they get identified and cataloged so it's very important also, when it comes to the back, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what you usually include in an album cover. Of course, these things vary a lot. This, there's no real rules, but this is generally what you would do. I keep using this cover because it's the one that's on my desk. This is the KVB. They are incredible. You should check them out. This EP is called Out of Body. Um, yeah, <laughs> just in case you were curious. But basically, I think the main things that you need, for example, in this cover, they don't have any font at the front. They don't have the name of anything and they have it all included at the back, which I, I'd say it's somewhat uncommon, but not super uncommon. I guess the most common way that you see these things done is that they'll have like the title of the album and the artist's name at the front. But again, you can include it in the back. So basically, there are no rules for the front of the cover. You can have whatever you want, as much information as you want, as little information as you want. But the spine and the back are very important, especially commercially. So on the back, in case you don't have the information at the front, then you'll have the artist and the title of the EP in the back. And then also, it's very common to have the track list. So basically, all the songs that are in the EP or the album. And then also, like I mentioned, you will have the barcode. And then a lot of the times you will have the record label logo, artist management logo, and then you have the little credits. So basically giving credits to who, you know, recorded, who mixed the album, the artwork credits, who played what, and all that. So basically it's, it's the credits. Just to finish up, this is also a very important tip. Make sure that you have the rights to use an image before <laughs> you use it because copyright is a very important thing you should always have permission or the rights to an image before you commercialize it basically with me because i mostly work with my own work so most of the covers that i've designed are made from my own photographs i don't usually run into this issue but it is a very important thing to consider and be careful if you are using work that's not yours so yeah, let me know if I skipped anything, if there's anything that you would like me to talk about. Again, this was more of like a technical overview of what should be in an album cover and not so much an artistic one. Maybe that can be part two or else this video would be very long. I would also love to go into a more artistic dive into album cover design. What I feel like works well visually, things to think about, you know, like composition and contrast and colors and stuff like that. I would love to also talk about that. So do let me know if you're interested in that. And yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe. Thank you so, so much for watching. Let me know what you would like to see next and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.